Good morning and welcome to Gethsemane Lutheran Church in Keyport for our online worship. This is the fourth Sunday after Easter on Sunday, May 3rd of 2020. And for those of you who are counting New Jersey, almost two months of the quarantine. Um, once again, Paul is with us. He can't see him because of social distancing and the camera angle, but he is playing the organ. Um, Casey is here, and you will see him when he reads our lessons. Um, he is going to read two lessons today. We have three lessons in our worship. Um, our first lesson is from Acts, and it is chapter, I have it here, 17, verses 1 to 9. Our second lesson that Casey will read is 1 Thessalonians, um, chapter 1, verses 1 to 10. Uh, those two passages are very related. The Acts passage tells us about Paul and his mission trip to the church of Thessalonica. And then that passage from 1 Thessalonians, it's a letter Paul wrote back to that church. And so the themes and the items in there are connected and related. Uh, in these passages, you will hear how lots of people um, received Paul's word about Jesus, but some people rejected it. And I will read Mark chapter 13, verses 9 to 11. And Jesus there warns his disciples that not everybody is going to receive. I'm glad we believe in Jesus or those who follow him. Um, our hymns are 389, Christ is Alive, Let Christians Sing, and 668, O Zion Haste. As we have in the season of Easter, we're going to begin with thanksgiving for baptism. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, from the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert you promised pools of water for the part, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the good shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross you watered us from Jesus' wounded side, and on this day you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water in this font, and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty and give us life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, and the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And now our first hymn which we will play through two times, first and second verse, if you actually follow at home. Um, Christ is alive, let Christians sing hymn number 389. Let us pray. 
Messiah Jesus, your followers established churches and communities near and far. Take us outside of ourselves and teach us to give away what you have given to us. Show us how to witness to your presence in places near and far. Amen. And now we'll continue with the readings. Our first reading comes from Acts chapter 17, verses 1 through 9. After Paul and Silas had passed through Amphilippus and Apollonia, they came to Thessal Thessalonica, where, they, where there was a synagogue of the Jews, and Paul went in, as was custom, and on three Sabbath days argued with them from the Scriptures, explaining and proving it was necessary for the Messiah to suffer and to rise from the dead, and saying, This is the Messiah, Jesus, whom I am proclaiming to you. Some of them were persuaded and joined Paul and Silas, and as did a great many of the devout Greeks, and not a few of the leading women. But the Jews became jealous, and with the help of some Rufinians in the marketplace, they formed a mob and set the city in an uproar. While they were searching for Paul and Silas to bring them out of the assembly, they attacked Jason's house. When they could not find them, they dragged Jason and some believers before the city authorities, shouting, These people who have been turning the world upside down have come here also, and Jason has entertained them as guests. They were all acting contrary to the decrees of the emperor, saying that there is another king named Jesus. The people and the city officials were disturbed when they heard this, and after they had taken a bail from Jason and the others, they let him go. Our second reading is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers constantly, remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor, of love and steadfastness, of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters beloved by God, that he has chosen you, because our message of the gospel came to you not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit, and with full conviction, just as you know what kind of person we proved to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators, and, and for us and all the Lord, for in spite of persecution, you received the word with joy inspired by the Holy Spirit so that you became an example to all believers in Macedonia and Ikea. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you, not only in Macedonia and Ikea, but in every place your faith in God has become known, so that we have no need to speak about it. For the people of those regions report about us what kind of welcome we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve a living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath that is coming. Our gospel lesson for today is taken from Mark, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus says, As for yourselves, beware, for they will hand you over to councils, and you will be beaten in synagogues, and you will stand before the governors and kings because of me as a testimony to them. And the good news must first be proclaimed to all nations. When they bring you to trial and hand you over, do not worry beforehand about what you are to say. But say whatever is given to you at that time, for it is not you who speak, but the Holy Spirit. This is the gospel of the Lord. 
I have been a Lutheran all my life. I have been going to church all of my life. And I have been studying my, the Bible all of my life. And I was thinking about this for the sermon. And I'm not going to give the exact number, but it's certainly over five decades. Because my mother was reading the Bible with me um, probably before I was three. And certainly by the time I could read, she was asking me to read the Bible. And so I grew up learning about Paul and Silas and the mission trips. And I grew up learning Bible stories about Paul's conversion and seeing the maps and missions of Paul's. And so it was quite a surprise to me as I got to be a young man when I started to realize that it wasn't all easy and glory for Paul. And yes, um, God used Paul to spread the word of Jesus um, throughout the Mediterranean area, the northern Mediterranean, um, you know, what would we call today Turkey and Greece, and eventually he made it over to Rome. Um, but it wasn't, wasn't all received well. In our passages today, all three of them, um, they point to the fact that yes, people believed in Jesus and they welcomed the word, and yet, not everybody did. <clears throat> in fact, um, Paul was off in jail, he was beaten, he was shipwrecked, um, and he did eventually was, was murdered, was martyred for his belief. Um, and so there were struggles and persecutions, and in that first lesson that Casey read, um, you hear that Paul goes into the temple at Thessalonica, the Jewish temple, and he's telling people about Jesus, and some are believing, but other people um, don't like it. It's considered a false message, and, and he is turned over to the authorities. And then in the second letter, or the second lesson, Paul's writing a letter, encouraging the Christians there, knowing that still not everybody believes. And, and these lessons, I think, are important for the church today, um, it's a time when Christianity um, is not always accepted. A lot of people don't believe or they don't trust Christianity. In some ways, rightfully so. Um, the church has done some, some bad things in recent years and, and in the far past. Um, so these are words of encouragement. And I would be happy to preach you a fine sermon on how to keep up the Christian faith and struggles, and I would have been glad to do that six months ago, um, but things are different now. As I said in our announcements, it's been almost two months since we've met together in person, um, and I do, I miss you. I, I miss you when I talk to you on the phone, many of you, um, when you email me, we email back, many of you say, you know, that we miss being with the other people in church, and, and I do too, not that I don't love Paul and Casey, be great to have the rest of you here today. Um, and it's difficult, it's a struggle, and it's not only that we miss being together from all the people, not just the church people, from family, parents and children, um, all kinds of people, um, people that are working from home, miss their co-workers, I mean, you know, there's all kinds of separation. Um, I am grateful for the internet, I am grateful for technology, because these are amazing ways to keep in touch with people. But one of the things that I've seen when I look on social media is that um, my feelings of frustration at this continued isolation um, are shared by many. Um, some are protesting in state capitals. Uh, there are states that are changing the rules and, and um, lifting some of the stay-at-home orders. I saw on the news today that the shopping malls, some of the shopping malls, certainly not in New Jersey, were reopening. Um, but what I do see, particularly when I see what, when I talk to individual friends, is there's a lot of frustration. Uh, there's, there's frustration, there's despair, despair over loss of jobs, despair over um, loss of income, despair over having to work at home and teach your kids, um, despair over grief, um, death. This is the amount of death in this virus is just overwhelming and it's global. And there isn't anybody that I haven't talked to that, that doesn't know someone at this point um, that's, that's been affected by this virus, and most people know someone who has died. Um, so, so it really is a very frustrating time, and I think these words that we have in our lessons today are very important to this. 
Um, Paul was first talking to people that were persecuted um, for teaching about Jesus. Um, but as I go back and I reflect on that second lesson, um, I'm struck with how in that Thessalonians passage, Paul is encouraging them in the Holy Spirit not to give up. Um, Paul is stressing to them that God is with them and has chosen them. Um, specifically, he says, we are remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor, of love and steadfast and hope. For we know, brothers and sisters, that God has chosen you because our message of the gospel came not in word only, but also in power in the Holy Spirit for your sake. Um, God is with us, and God empowered the first church um, to persevere during all kinds of hardships. And we need to remember that. I mean, yes, um, Paul was persecuted. He was eventually executed. Um, lots of struggles were again. But the church is rock. I was told about Paul because Paul told somebody who told somebody who told somebody who told somebody. Eventually got down to my mother and my Sunday school teachers and my past growing up as a child. Um, and so the church and followers of Jesus persevered, and not only for survival, but to share the good news with others, to continue to find what the church has done, of caring for those who are hungry and in need, of fighting against injustice and persecution. Um, and so, so I know about that because people didn't lose heart, and most importantly, because they have the power of the Holy Spirit with them. And we need to remember that now. I need to remember that. I fight the despair some days going into these two months of the virus. I keep saying the two months must be wearing on me. Um, plus, I don't know when the end will be. In New Jersey, uh, we don't have a date to remove the restrictions. Um, the death counts are still very high. Um, and so I don't have an end. And I don't know when we'll be together. And I don't know about the questions people ask about their finances and their businesses and their mortgages. Um, but I do, by the grace of God, know Jesus. And that Jesus that was with the Apostle Paul, that Jesus that was with Silas is with us now. We need to remember that. We need to lift that up. We need to thank God that we are still able to proclaim God's word with technology um, and all kinds of different ways that we can still share together. We still have the power of prayer to support and lift one another up. And so that truly is great news. That is something we need to hold on to. It's something we need to proclaim to our family and our friends. And it is God and God's power that will carry all of us through. Um, we don't know what the future will look like, um, but we do know that our risen Lord and Savior will be there just as through the power of the Spirit, Jesus has been with his followers for the last 2,000 years, not two months, 2,000 years to strengthen them now and always. Amen. And our next hymn is 668, O Zion Haste.
Let us pray. Almighty God, we pray for those of us who are struggling during this time, and that is pretty much every one of us, Lord, for whatever the reason. For those of us that do not have enough money to buy food or pay for rent or other needs. For those who are struggling um, to manage to teach children at home or to work for home and to reach out in new ways. For those who are on the front lines fighting this disease, whether it be in hospitals or doctor's office, or working in necessary and vital industries such as production and food stores and driving and delivering. Be with us, be with them. We pray for churches learning new ways to proclaim your ancient message. We pray for those who are dealing with severe anxiety, fear, depression, And for those who are trying to help them, we pray for all who are sick and in need. We pray for all in government working to fight this virus, working to find out how to get the resources to fight this virus, to pay the bills. Pray for those who are still fighting wars. We pray for those still dealing with earthquakes and storms and floods, tornadoes. Help us to trust and rely on you. And Lord, we remember those who have died from coronavirus and all causes and all who mourn. In your name we pray, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Bless you now and forever. Amen.